What's up video creators, it's videomark.net. Welcome to the Adobe Create Your Fate competition, the trailer remix challenge where you get to re-edit the trailer for the blockbuster movie Terminator Dark Fate. The best thing is you actually, you get to work with actual footage from the movie. Adobe and Paramount have uh, wrapped up a great package of content to, for you to work with. So before we get to work, let's take a look at that asset kit first. So when you downloaded the asset kit and extracted it, you should be getting something like this. Keep in mind though, that the final selection that you are getting might be a little different, slightly different from what you're seeing here. So it's not set in stone, but it should be roughly this amount of content that you are getting in this selection of clips. So what you're getting is um, a bunch of stock audio and stock video assets from Adobe Stock and Premium Beat that you can use in your project, as well as a couple of MoGraph templates these are pre-made graphic animations templates that you can import into Premiere Pro. We're going to take a look at that in a minute and customize so um, you can use it in your project. On top of that, you're going to get a template project. This is the actual teaser trailer as well as the footage. As I said, this might be different from what you are getting, but you're getting roughly this amount of uh, clips to work with. And this is actual footage from the movie. Okay, so let's fire up Premiere Pro. Create a new project, click on new project. And in this window, just uh, browse uh, to your location. This is our destination folder. Give it a name. We want to call it trailer remix challenge and uh, say, okay. And you just created your blank project to actually start working in Premiere Pro. You can do two things. You can start a new sequence, create a new sequence or import your footage and drag it on your sequence. Let's take a look at the sequence settings here on new item set sequence. And you will be presented with this long list of sequences. But in general, I suggest to use a full HD 30 frames per second sequence. That's a great starting point. So under AVC HD 1080p 30 frames per second say okay and that's our sequence that's actually a good starting point but as i said you don't have to worry about sequences too much because premiere pro will actually ask you when you import footage if you want to change those settings to match to match the footage so here in our project just double click the panel the project panel and then browse to your asset kit folder and then let's say documentary stock video uh, just select all four of them say open and here you got your stock video files. And since these video clips are already selected, just drag them on this folder to help you to organize your project just a little bit. And then name that folder. And this is your video folder now. So as I said, when you drag one of these, any video asset on your timeline, Premiere Pro is going to ask you what you want to do with it. If you want to change the settings to match the footage. Yes. And here you have your perfect settings. So, so you really don't have to worry too much about sequence settings. Now, when we go back to the blank project, this, uh, another thing you can do, just again, double click the project panel, um, go to our actual footage and select all our footage, either command or control A or select them with by holding a shift key. You can also just select the folder, the whole folder, and then click on import folder and then Premiere Pro will import everything. And now within this um, folder, just drag any of these clips on your timeline. As you can see, we have not created a sequence just yet. You can just drop it, drop it here and Premiere Pro will create a sequence with the perfect settings for your footage. That's another way to do it. So again, you don't really have to worry about sequence settings too much. Premiere Pro will do the heavy lifting for you. So we just created our project file. We imported the footage. And at this point, I would actually suggest to commit to an audio file early in the process because it's very, it's going to be very helpful, especially when creating trailers uh, to commit to an audio file early uh, and set a certain tone. It's going to be very helpful for your storytelling and to find a certain rhythm when editing the trailer. So let's go ahead and double click the project panel again. And here in your asset kit, um, go to documentary genre stock audio. It's the very first folder here. You have a couple of things um, to choose from. And then you have this one here, select that. And now when we drop this uh, in, your, in our timeline and play it back with the space bar, 
you see that's already giving you a certain mood and um, you can uh, follow along or maybe just experiment and try another audio file. And now let's go ahead and add a couple of clips from our footage folder to your, to your timeline. You can select, um, you can go to your footage folder, select a certain range by holding the shift key and drag all these clips on your timeline and then... And at this point, actually, you would just go ahead and experiment, mix and match, rearrange. We're going to take a look at that in a second. Okay, we've got the sound score in place. Here's the fun part. We get to edit the footage. Let's talk about the source uh, monitor real quick. When, you, we go, when we go into the footage folder and double click our footage, uh, it's going to open in, uh, in the source monitor. And here you can use the I and O keys to set an in and out point and drag this part to your um, timeline. Or you can use these icons right here to actually punch your footage into your timeline. Okay, pretty simple. And of course, if you want to do all the work in the timeline itself, just hold down the shift key, select a certain range and bring all these clips in your timeline. You want to lock the audio for now because we want to edit and trim all these clips and not affect the audio file. So here you can actually just start dragging on these clips and trim them. As you can see, that's pretty simple. When you have a gap, right click and ripple delete, that will close the gap. Of course, you can use the razor tool to place cuts and just um, delete the selected clip. And by the way, if you don't have this auto selection of clips when scrubbing the playhead, just go to sequence and check selection follows playhead. And then that's a very convenient way to work your way through the timeline. And then you select something, just hit delete and it's gone. Another way you can trim your clips in the timeline is the ripple edit tool. Just select it. And then when you hover over the clip and drag it all the way over, it will trim and close that gap at the same time. Okay. What I use a lot are shortcuts. In this case, um, Q and W, what it does is when you have your playhead, for instance, on this clip and you want to delete the from the beginning to the position of the playhead, just hit Q and then it will delete that part of the clip and close the gap. Same thing at the end, playhead to the end of the clip, W, and it will just delete what's in between. Okay, same thing here. Let's say we want to trim right before she's turning the head, hit Q and then boom. Okay. And at the end, we want to trim it down just a little bit, just like that. So these are pretty simple tools to use in the timeline and um, work very quickly when editing and trimming your clips. Another thing that you will do, um, do a lot and when working in your timeline is actually rearranging clips. So let's say you've got this one or maybe no, because yeah, we want to move this clip over right at this position. So select the clip, hold down control and alt or command and option on a Mac, and then start dragging and just move it into place. And this indicator here will tell you that um, a clip is being moved. And this arrow will tell you that is being moved only on that track. That's because of the alt or option key and drop it. And then you can see boom and turning the head. Okay, you could also do that with multiple clips. Let's say, not make any sense, but I don't know, a bunch of clips here. Again, Control and Alt or Command and Option on a Mac. Start dragging and then bring them over. Okay, things are coming together. We've got a rough cut in place and now it's time to spice things up a little bit by adding some graphics and import some motion graphics templates. Uh, importing motion graphics templates works a little bit different from usual assets. You will, you're going to need the essential graphics panel for that. To access your panels, go to Window, and here you can activate your panels. But instead of pushing your panels around, you can just use the workspaces. Go to Window, Workspaces, and here you will find a couple of pre-made layouts organized. And here's graphics. When you hit graphics, just in case you're sitting on another layout, this is your essential graphics panel at the, on the right side. And here at the lower right corner on this icon, it says install motion graphics template. When you click that icon, again, browse to your asset kit and go to the MoGraph template folder, double click. Let's select, I don't know, the very first one here, and it will be imported to your library right here. And now you can drag this to your timeline. It will create 
that graphic asset on your timeline. And as you can see, this is sort of an award show animation that the author has created. And these MoGraph templates always look different. It depends on what the designer, the motion designer has designed for you, but he's giving you a couple of parameters that you can customize. Let's say you're clicking on your asset right here under the edit tab. You're going to see a couple of values that you can change. For instance, the global position or the text control edit text. Number one, it says award winner. Let's say, best and then movie and as you can see it will update in real time so that's a good way to actually find those uh, motion graphics templates the asset kit comes with a selection of motion graphics templates but when you go to the browse tab and um, click on adobe stock which is in, uh, incorporated into premiere pro seamlessly you have a ton of pre-made motion graphics templates to choose from you can cycle through these pages and really that's so many different styles that you can use for you for this competition as well you could also go to there's a bunch of free templates you can use of course some of them are paid and it always depends on how complex they are but keep in mind again they are always different the parameters you can change are always different different that's something that the author has determined to be editable to be customizable for the user let's talk about sound effects for the perfect movie trailer you have to have you have to have the perfect sound mix and for that i opened up that template timeline of this teaser trailer and i've imported that audio track that we had used in our initial edit this right here and this timeline comes with a dialogue track. My name is Sarah Connor. Never seen one like you before. Right. And um, now we're going to combine that with our music. So here's our sound score. I'll drop that on our, on our timeline. I'll move it into place just like this. Nudge it over just a little bit and then play it back. Never seen one like you before. Almost human. Sounds good, but you might have noticed that the dialogue and the music um, don't play well together. It's it's the music is way too loud. My name is Sarah Connor. You can't really hear what she's saying. So for that, you there's a great function that you can use, and that's Auto Duck. It's a very handy handy function, and we're uh, we're gonna move over to another workspace. It's called Audio, and here you have the Essential Sound panel, and this is something that usually has been done by hand by by placing uh, keyframes on that audio file but now you can automate that it's actually very accurate it's incredible so click on this audio file click on music and check ducking what this does is it will auto automatically detect language compared to the music depending on your settings here it will set keyframes where the volume is being decreased by us by the amount that you are setting here in the settings so let's crank up the sensitivity just a little bit up to all the way up to eight and the duck amount to maybe minus 10 and the fades i don't know maybe to 300 milliseconds something like this and then generate keyframes so as you can see premiere pro has generated keyframes right around where Dialogue has been detected, and let's play that back. My name is Sarah Connor. Never seen one like you before. Almost human. Wow, perfect. It's really incredible how accurate this is. So one last thing I want to talk about really briefly, that's um, color grading. Of course, that's a very complex topic. There's professional colorists out there, but um, in Premiere Pro, it's actually really easy to um, give it a new color look. You could actually go, let's change the workspace here. There's a dedicated workspace for color grading. It's called Color. And uh, we're back with our Lumetri color panel. And then when you have a clip selected, all these settings um, are... Uh, being activated and these are a couple of tabs that are um, going to help you organize your color grade it's basic correction creative to uh, apply uh, LUTs pre-made LUTs so let's um, take it step by step here in basic color correction you can actually this is a little dark here so let's uh, increase the exposure maybe something like this of course it depends on your source footage where unfortunately uh, you're not going to be able to work with raw files here so there's a certain limit when you take it too far you're going to see artifacts it's going to fall apart but actually um 
increasing the ex exposure a little bit, it's going to work. You can uh, change the temperature. This is basically pretty self-explanatory. Contrast, highlights, increase or decrease the shadows and things along those lines. Then you can, of course, go into the curves adjustment, just like in Photoshop, and then adjust it from here. Instead of doing this clip by clip, you can use adjustment layers to have the same color grading across multiple clips. In the project panel right here, Let's open this up a little bit here under this new item icon, click on that icon and then select adjustment layer. What this does is anything that you apply to this adjustment layer will affect any clip that's below this adjustment layer. So let's drag this into our timeline and now activate that adjustment layer. Nothing changes here, but now in the Lumetri panel, when you do anything like in, let's, let's uh, overdo that a little bit so you can see the difference. I don't know, maybe something like this. And now in the, in the creative tab, let's apply one of these pre-made LUTs. Premiere Pro comes with a whole bunch of uh, LUTs here, and then maybe select this one. You can also in this window cycle through this, uh, these LUTs and then um, it will show you how it will look like. And when you double click it, it will give you um, that LUT, okay? And as you can see, this has been applied to our adjustment layer. And when we move forward, everything is going to look the same. Okay, so that's a very handy way to apply color corrections. Like this is a night scene here, and then at the day scene, of course, it would be a very tedious task to do that um, for each individual clip. And adjustment layers are a great way to do that in one step. And of course, if you have a look that you like, you can click on that adjustment layer and hold down the Alt or Option key and then start dragging. It will duplicate that and then take it from there. Okay, when you have your um, edit, how do you actually get it out of, um, out of the timeline? So you can set an in and out point, and this part will be then exported. Hit Control M or go to fi File, Export, and Media. And then in this dialogue, again, it's, it can get very complex, but I would suggest uh, to use one of these um, t presets, which is this one here, and go to YouTube, a full HD. And once you set a destination under output name, um, click export and export your timeline. Yeah, so this should give you a quick overview over the tools and techniques you might want to use in this competition by Adobe and Paramount for Terminator Dark Fate. And um, yeah, it's Video Mark for Adobe. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to uh, drop me a question on social media under this uh, handle, VideoMarkNet. And I hope you found this overview helpful and I'll see you in the next video.